Media days are still going strong, right? ACC and Big Ten media days are this week in Charlotte and Indianapolis, respectively. There was a comment from USC coach Lincoln Riley that went viral on Wednesday. The short version of the clip was Alabama didn't schedule for their fans. They scheduled to win championships when it came to future scheduling challenges. And um, he brought up specifically, or maybe he or somebody else brought up Alabama's scheduling model under Nick Saban. The full quote that I went to go find um, as he was talking about, you know, the decision, the decision-making process when it comes to scheduling future opponents Bama was ahead of the curve for years, I thought, on how they scheduled in the non-conference, Riley told a handful of reporters. He continued, they would occasionally hit the marquee non-conference game. They'd play two other very, not very good teams. They'd play one late, so they essentially got a little bit of a bye week there late in the season. They didn't schedule for their fans. They scheduled to win championships. He went on, my hope is that we can do the same thing, schedule to win championships. That includes a rivalry game for all that comes with that and all that it means. But if you get in the positions, you've got to make a decision on what the priority is. The not scheduling for fans, scheduling for championships bid is the what went viral here. But Alex, you've got some thoughts on this. What do you think of Lincoln Riley's thoughts on Alabama scheduling? I don't know what he's talking about. I, I honestly don't know what he's talking about. Alabama has played as strong a non-conference schedule over Nick Saban's term as anybody. I mean, they popularized the big marquee uh, neutral site game. I mean, you start with the Clemson game early in that tenure. That wasn't an easy game. They played all these teams, and yeah, the scores were lopsided, and sometimes you caught a team like a West Virginia or a USC or whoever it was that wasn't exactly at the top of their game, Michigan, another one. Um, but they scheduled them, and they continued to schedule them why we're going to Wisconsin this year? It was under Nick Saban. He, you don't that game doesn't happen without his blessing. So it just doesn't make any sense to me to say that they were strategic about the other non-conference games. Well, who isn't? I mean, you get teams like look at Michigan's schedule last year. What was their non-conference game? Yeah, they, they all do one decently big one. Some of them do, and they do two smaller ones. What you do? They pay games. Um, the fact that it falls. But right before your rivalry game is just the way the cookie crumbles. I mean, it's just how it happens. I don't think Nick started that. Um, it just seemed like an unnecessary thing to say to justify what I think we really wanted to say is, I don't want to play these big games anymore if they're not conference games. I don't think he does. I think this is what I'm worried about and what we kind of touched on in the last, last podcast. I think teams think with an expanded playoff, you can schedule your way in. And if you only have one loss, they're not going to kick you out. So if we if we don't challenge ourselves in a non-conference, it's not going to hurt us. Because if we're the 12 or the 13 or the 14, who cares as long as we're in? Um, my fear is that's what's going on. I don't know that for certain, but that's that was me reading between the lines on some pretty weak comments, I thought. Some of the non-conference games on Alabama schedule during the Saban tenure, they played Florida State in 07. Clemson in 08, uh, Penn State in both 10 and 11, Michigan in 2012, Virginia Tech again in 2013, Wisconsin in 2015, USC in 2016, pretty lopsided win if I remember correctly, Florida State in 2017, Miami, Texas the last couple years into the 2020s. Mike, you also brought up the, when we were kind of throwing this back and forth in the group chat, the, the Saban tirade, I suppose, when after they played who was in New Mexico State. You know, what, I mean, what was Saban's exact quote? Like, we'll play whoever scheduled us. Do you want to call? Like, he looked at the reporter and was just like, do you want to call and, and schedule games for us? Because we'll play whoever wants to play us. And at that at that point, you know, it was chugging right along. So who really did want to play Alabama? But, I, Mike, you got any additional thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, it. he hasn't been asked about it in a while. Um, or I guess he wasn't asked about it his last few years now that he's no longer the coach. They haven't, I mean, Alabama hasn't really had any scheduling news in a while. They kind of had that binge where they scheduled a bunch of these home and home games, uh, which are obviously replacing these neutral site games that they used to have. Um, but there, it hasn't really been a topic in a while. And it's not really, it was kind of out of left field from Riley in terms of, I don't think anybody's been talking about Alabama scheduling soft for a while. I don't think it's, it's been the case. Um, it's, it seemed misplaced because really the bigger deal is the ACT only having eight conference games because then you're scheduling one major team, you know, which 
was Texas last year. And then you had kind of your two um, group of five teams, which for Alabama last year was what, Middle Tennessee and South Florida. And then you have your FCS team, which for them last year was Chattanooga. Whereas you go back, I was just looking at Lincoln Riley's schedules when he was the coach at Oklahoma. The Big 12 had you know nine conference games at that point. They did have that kind of one big non-conference game. I think one year was Ohio State for them, one year was UCLA. And then they had some lesser games. You know, South Dakota was in there, UTEP, um, Tulane. Um, so is there not, there's not really a big difference. I think there's probably a fair argument from other conferences that the SEC should be playing nine conference games. I think that's probably what Lincoln's getting at. I don't think that's an Alabama specific thing. I think that's an SEC thing. So again, I think it's a little bit misplaced. Um, but Alabama's schedule is not out of the ordinary. It hasn't been out of the ordinary. You have that one big game. You have the two group of five. You have the one FCS. It's been their formula for a while. It's been a lot of schools formula for a while. Um, so I don't know. Like, it's kind and of the, weird. The point Nick made in that that mini tirade, I don't know if it qualified as a full tirade back then, but was that it was difficult to schedule games. And if right. you need any evidence of that, it's the fact that Alabama had to go to USF to play a football game. That doesn't happen 10 years ago. They'd take the money, come to Alabama, and be done with it. But it did become increasingly difficult. And I do think two things could be true at once. The SEC should play nine games. Uh, there's no excuse for it. Right. At the same time, you can say that the SEC's eight games are much more difficult than what the Pac-12's nine games were. They could play 11 games in the Pac-12. It wouldn't be the same level of difficulty. That's what frustrated me so much. You heard a lot out of the Big Ten, you know, getting met when they went to nine. Suddenly everybody else had to do it and that the SEC was weak for not doing it. I was like, well, yeah, you got – I mean, look at the schedule. It's nine of yours, eight of theirs, like – what are we really talking right. about here? If you're playing Rutgers or yeah. whatever, you know, Northwestern, it's probably the same as an SEC team scheduling Middle Tennessee or group of five team, a better group of five team. It's just, it's strange. Saban's retired and he's still somehow catching strays for no right. apparent reason. And there's a lot you could, you could get on him about on different things. But uh, I thought Lincoln would go after him for the no huddle offense before he'd go after him for uh, scheduling. That was just weird. And I think your point, though, is kind of what Lincoln's trying to get at is if you schedule for fans, then you're playing 12 SEC games. You're playing 12 major conference games because that's what fans want to watch. Like every fan will tell you they don't want to go sit through a Utah State game or whatever. Um, and I think ultimately college football is probably heading that direction. It's slowly evolving towards that um, where I don't know how long it's going to take, but I think that's what the TV networks ultimately are going to want. But in the interim, like you have to make sure that you're qualifying or putting your team in the best position to qualify for the playoffs. So if that's, you know, Missouri playing the schedule they are this year and giving themselves the best chance to make the SEC championship and sneak into the playoff, then they're doing what's best for them. Well, um, that's why I think this year, the, if the Missouri thing comes up again, it's going to be so interesting. The committee needs to draw a line in the sand that says you can't schedule your way in in terms of a week schedule. I'd rather you lose three really good games and get and put you in than lose than win a bunch of games that don't matter. Like it shouldn't be oh the field is expanding, you can do less. No, it should be an incentive to do more. I think that's what it, they should figure out a way to incentivize. I think it's inherent that it should be incentivized that way, but I think some schools are going to try to work around. Well, what if you have a Missouri that goes undefeated and in the regular season goes to the SEC championship game, loses, they have one loss, and then you have an Alabama team that played a much harder schedule, has three losses. I don't think there's any way Alabama gets in over Missouri, even though their strength of schedule might be much well, harder. Head to head, that's kind of a. Oh yeah, let's let's put that aside. Yeah, it's a good point because then. You're assuming a Missouri beat Alabama. Let's say they didn't play this year. But if Alabama had two losses and Missouri had one, right. I would put Alabama in ahead of them, and they didn't play because right. Alabama tried to play somebody. I mean, ultimately, that's what you have to do. You can't – this is a TV product. The CFP is an extension of a TV network. Like, you've got to play good games. And all these ADs – you know, you talk about uh, Lincoln Riley saying they don't schedule for the hands. The ADs need to start scheduling for the fans because – 
the attendance issue is not really going away. Like it's going to continue to be incentivized to not go to games in person. So they need to do these things. And again, this is incumbent on the selection committee. Draw a line in the sand, make a statement. If it hurts a school for a season, okay, but we got to get to a place where people aren't scared to schedule games. And I'm, I'm not advocating for it, but the skeptic in me says that on December 7th, whatever the date is that we have the selection committee, that they're still going to tier teams undefeated, one loss, two loss, and that's how you're going to see teams ranked. Um, I, I still think that's the way they think. I think there's still enough support. Uh, I'm just speaking anecdotally on Twitter, like national reporters that are going to advocate for a one loss, whoever, you know, Utah team or undefeated Utah team over a two loss SEC team or whatever the case may be. Like you're, you're going to get those teams that just get popularized a little bit. Um, we've seen it before. I think Washington was probably in that category, you know, justifiably so last year, TCU a couple years ago, like those teams are, they're, they're going to pick up some popular support um, because people are, it's different. There's a novelty factor for those teams winning as they do. And it's like, how can you keep an undefeated Florida state team out? How can you do that? You know, it's the skeptic in me still says it's going to be take your undefeated teams, take your one loss teams and see who's left after that. That's what it's going to be. And if you want to put a weak scheduling undefeated or one loss team in, that's fine. Just make them the 13 seed. Like if you want to say, okay, we're going to put you in the playoff, but you got to play your way in, use the seeding to send your message. You can do that too. Now, my fear is that, Mike, you are absolutely right because it's what the com committee sees as zero and their eyes just light up. Right. Um, the, that's why the Florida State thing, you hope that that's a sign that they can kind of make a, a, a reasoned decision. Um, I don't want the Seminole fans jumping in here telling me relitigating the whole thing, but they, they made the right call. And they thought through a difficult situation. So let's do that when it comes to scheduling. Good. And doesn't, not to get too far off track, but like Alex Golish, the South Florida coach who came out this week, was asked about why are you playing Miami and Alabama. Uh, I think there's a valid point there. Like if you're a group of five team, you want your easiest path to getting to the playoff. <laughs> um, the, the least, like if you're an undefeated group of five team, you want to be in that position where the committee thinks you're the best group of five team out there. So that obviously, if you go undefeated in your conference, you win it, you're automatically in that conversation. And then it's comparing the group of five champions. And I think if you have an undefeated record, that might put you in that 12 spot. Um, now, you're if you're passing up those games, you're probably giving up some money. But if you make the playoff, then you're getting money. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting uh, dilemma that didn't exist before because there's no automatic qualifier for a group of five teams before. I mean, Cincinnati was the only team that got in, in the four-team playoff, if I'm correct. So um, it's kind of a uncharted waters and uh, might change the strategy and how some of those group of five teams schedule.